Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Making Your Website Work for You. My name is Kari Kurtz, and I am the Coordinator of Business Development at ASTA, and I will also be the organizer for today's presentation. We are happy to welcome today's presenter, Richard Earls, Voyager Website Publisher. Before we get started, I'd like to point out a few important features on your screen that will allow you to interact with us via the web. We'll be answering all of your questions at the end of this presentation. To ask a question, you will be using your GoToWebinar pane. Near the bottom of this pane, there is an area that says questions. If you click the arrow next to where it says questions, this will open up another window pane that you'll be using to communicate with me. If you're having trouble hearing this presentation, please try turning your speakers all the way up. And if you've dialed in, um, please try hanging up and calling back in again. You can send me any technical questions via this pane, and I will try to answer them via the same pane to the best of my ability. Please also note that all audience members are muted. We certainly want to hear from you all. But with so many people on today's call, background noise would prove to be prohibitive. And we want to ensure that everyone can hear Richard's entire presentation. Remember, one of today's webinar attendees will win a $100 Visa gift card courtesy of Access. You must be on this presentation from beginning to end to win, and we will announce the winner live after the Q&A session. Finally, remember that this webinar is being recorded and will be available for your on-demand viewing at ASTA.org for all of our members by the end of the week. Now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome Richard. Thank you, Kara. I do appreciate it, and, and thank you to everyone who's attending today. We're going to talk about something that um, I think is really important to us because it points to um, a pain point for travel professionals, and it's something that I hear all the time, um, and it was one of the reasons that we first started Voyager websites. And the, the complaint that I hear so often goes something like this. People will tell me that they have a website, but they really don't know why they have it, that they don't generate any business from it. They don't even know why they're spending money on it. They never get any sales from it. And that seems to me to be uh, indicative of some kind of flaw in, in uh, the way that we're constructing our websites and our business. And that's what we began to investigate early on in uh, Voyager websites. <clears throat> and so what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about traffic and generating that traffic, but then I want to switch to, okay, what happens when that traffic hits our website? How do we engage with our traffic and what, do, what impression are we giving them and what are, what are we telling them about our business? And what are we telling them about the way that a travel professional works? And so let's just take a look at a second um, at types of traffic. You know, basically there are three types of traffic and there's traffic that you control and there is traffic that you don't control and then traffic that you own. And so let's talk about that. The traffic you control is the traffic that you go out and you seek and you do that primarily through your marketing. So you might be in your social media advertising, uh, in your Facebook page, uh, newspaper advertising, the kind of cross-marketing that you do when you put your uh, domain name on your business card or when you put your domain name on your invoices or in your email uh, footers. So that's traffic you control. You're, you're actually framing the way that they perceive you and you're, you're really in control of that. But then there's traffic you don't control so much. And these are people that find you one way or the other, but the, the center of gravity is further away from you. And so you have to make sure that you're conditioning that audience that's coming to you as well as you can. Uh, and that's what I refer to as framing. So you're, you're, you wanna make sure that, that they're getting a really good sense of who you are and what you do. Uh, this is, these are people that come onto your site and you don't really know how they got to your site. Maybe it's your search engine optimization. Uh, maybe it's a referral from somebody else. Maybe it's coming from, from travel sense. Maybe they have stumbled upon some type of literature 
but you've probably not met this person who's coming to your website. You probably haven't done anything to directly condition it, or to the extent you have, it's one or two steps removed from you. So you've got the traffic you can control. That's the traffic that you are directly trying to get to your website. And you've got the traffic you don't control, traffic that finds you one way or another. And then you've got the traffic that you own. And this is the traffic that may be on your email list. Maybe they're existing clients and you are bringing them to your website. You're encouraging them to come to your website and presenting yourself there in, in your strongest persona. Uh, so the, the objective that you've got is to take the traffic you control through your marketing and the traffic you don't control through other resources and you're trying to make it traffic that you own. You want these people one way or another to give you their email address, to give you more information, to engage with you somehow. And so that's our objective. That's what we want to do. And all of these marketing efforts are important. Obviously, some of it we have control of better than we have other types. Um, but the mission is finally, at the end of the day, engagement, turning that traffic that arrives at your site into traffic you can own and traffic you can engage with. It is marketing, not sales. I think that's one thing that's important to remember. Um, we, are, we are doing, when we're talking about social media, we don't talk about social media sales, we talk about social media marketing. And I believe, it's correct to say that a website is more about marketing than sales. Now, that's not true if you're Expedia. Uh, that's not true if you're Priceline. But for people engaged in a one-to-one -one personal business like, like travel consulting, that website is much more about marketing than it is about the sales process. And so we've got to figure out how to best connect with people, how to, how to remain high on, on their radar so that they're always thinking, if when they think about travel, they think about us. And so being able to properly engage with a client gives you a tremendous competitive advantage. But you've got to bring the person to your site, and then you've got to hold them to your site. Now, all good marketing is based on a marketing funnel. And I don't care what marketing effort you're undertaking. If you'll think about it in terms of the marketing funnel, you'll do a better job of it. And just to use sort of an off the wall example, when you go to a chamber of commerce meeting, we're really talking about the marketing funnel. And you can use marketing funnel principles to do a good job of working the room so there's a bunch of people out there who know you and there's a bunch of people who don't probably more who don't at that particular networking function and so then you have the opportunity to make them aware of you so someone introduces you or uh you walk up uh if you're less of a of a um introvert than I am, you walk up and you introduce yourself and you begin getting into conversation. It's typically not long in a conversation that somebody says, what do you do? And the way that you answer that question is going to determine the amount of interest they first take in you. So now let me, let me talk about an interesting little flaw in the travel agency world. Your clients and people in general probably don't understand very well what you do. They actually misunderstand what you do. They think you sell travel. They put you in the same category as they put the internet, as they put Expedia, as they put Priceline, as they put every other travel agent they've ever known. They think you sell travel and that creates that shopping environment that we all hate so much. So if you say, I'm a travel agent, they are going to immediately assume they, that they know what you do. 
And in fact, how many of us have heard time and time again, travel agents, I didn't know travel agents still existed. And so finding something other than a travel agent to call yourself is a really good idea. Asta, of course, took that on um, uh, last year by moving to travel advisor. There's travel consultant. You know, there is there is travel planner. But find something other than travel agent, because the moment you come at them from a little bit different angle, then they're going to want to engage you. Well, what's a travel advisor? They know what a travel agent is. They think they do. Travel agents sell travel. But if you come at them from a little bit of a different angle, now they have to engage you. And when they begin engaging you, they're further down in the funnel. Their interest level is peaked. And so they begin getting more of an inclination to evaluate you and what you're all about. And if you can make them comfortable with you, then you can begin forming a relationship. Now, if that's true about a Chamber of Commerce meeting, it is certainly true about your website. And what we don't want to do in any of our encounters with clients is to reinforce that misapprehension that you sell travel. So we want to begin talking to the client or to the prospective client using creative language and speaking to emotion rather than logistics. Now, I've, I talk a lot about the fact that we've got two sides of our brain. And on one side of our brain, we've got an accountant. And on the other side of the brain, we've got the explorer. And the explorer is all about adventure and emotion and the, the romance of travel. The accountant's all about logistics. The accountant's all about this is what I do, this is how I do it. And so what we all tend to do sometimes is speak to the accountant first. And sometimes we do that by instead of selling the romance of travel, we start selling the process of travel. We start talking about how you do what you do. Rather than engaging, people love to talk about travel. And so give them time to talk about their travel, what they love about travel. And don't start talking about the process. Don't talk about the logistics and don't talk about all the, the things that, that take that sort of throw up warning signs to people when they think about travel. What's this going to cost me? And, you know, isn't it dangerous to travel to Central and South America right now? And, you know, all the, all the complexities. Talk about the emotion, the excitement, the adventure. That's going to condition them to becoming more com co to, to becoming more susceptible and more um, uh, inclined to joining you in a community, a community of content, a community of excitement, a community of travel. And so when you look at the kinds of things that we want to be putting in front of clients, it's things that inspire travel. It's things that take those logistical elements and put them way in the back. And instead, we inspire the client. We inspire the client through the way we talk to them. We inspire the client with the things that we have on our website. We stay away from the logistical elements. We want them to romance the notion of travel. And we want to put ourselves at the center of the travel transaction. So when you're going to Facebook, that's the reason that Facebook says use uh, photographs, use video. They know that that's what attracts people, not long blocks of text. Here's a few pieces that we've put together in the um, social media part of our program. And you can see here, here's a, here's a $10 spin that got in front of uh, 5,600 people. Look at the number of likes it received. Look at the number of clicks. 
those people become part of the traffic that we're beginning to own now. Over on our Travel Hoppers page on Facebook, we've got 16,000 consumers. And we've done that simply by using this kind of methodology. Inspiring travel. Talking about the community of travel. Talking to the emotional side of our clients. This is probably the most successful piece we ever did. We spent $20 boosting this post. It reached over 40,000 people. Look how many times it was shared. Look how many times it was clicked on. Look how many times people commented on it. That's reaching a lot of people who we can begin now taking ownership of by placing them deeper into the marketing funnel. So that's what we want to look at. How do we generate traffic? And then what happens to them when they get to our site? Unfortunately, too many uh, websites, and especially the websites that you commonly see in the travel industry are not marketing funnels, they're marketing trampolines. We do exactly the wrong thing. If we're trying to convince people that we don't sell travel, that we're all about the romance of travel, then why do we do things like this? If you put a bunch of supplier logos on your site, are you saying, I don't care about selling travel? Or are you saying, hey, look at all these great suppliers I represent? Your website should be about you. That's what differentiates you from Expedia, one-to-one -one contact with a client. This methodology that you're seeing in front of you right now is more Expedia-like than it should be. And in particular, the use of these supplier logos because what we're doing there is we are essentially saying this is what's important well your client can go look up every one of those suppliers and in fact that little search engine right there i think is one of the worst things the travel industry ever did to itself you search it and you get an awful lot of information now you want your client to talk to you but when they have this much information what they're going to do instead is go to google and this is what they're going to see. All of a sudden, it's all about price. They're shopping. You haven't brought them closer to the funnel. You bounced them off of your website, and now they're out there looking instead at all the other possibilities. They're shopping. They're acting like they're looking for a refrigerator or a washer. Then they are travel. We've lost the opportunity to romance them, and we've sent them out on a logistical hunt. It's totally wrong-headed. So I want to look at something right now that we've done to correct those misapprehensions. This is a piece of content that we produce uh, at Voyager, and it's a story about what using a travel advisor is all about. We want, to re we want to correct the misapprehensions that people have. Early in the process, involve one of our travel advisors. Many people believe travel professionals sell travel, but the reality is a good travel advisor doesn't sell anything. Rather, we assist you in making good, try good buying decisions because we are immersed in the travel industry and researching every day. We have access to first-rate resources and we know which suppliers to use and which to avoid. A good travel consultant will help you to research travel and to use your time wisely, sidestepping the perils of planning with too little knowledge. Our consultants are client-centric. Your travel desires are our primary concern. And we want to establish a long-term relationship with you. So your satisfaction is paramount. 
that's the message we want to give them. Because now, not only do they know what you do, but they know why. And they begin to understand how it benefits them. They begin to understand that you're there because you help them achieve value in their travel. And we're romancing the client. We're, we're inspiring travel. Who doesn't want to see that? Who doesn't want to become a part of this? This helps establish that community of travel that we're talking about. So our websites look a little bit different. They look new. They look modern. Richard? And this, yes. I am so sorry to interrupt, but right now all we are seeing is desert sand. Okay, let's see what happened then. Desert sand. I believe okay. that it is your. There we go. You... Perfect. Is that better? Yes. Okay, let me back up here a little bit. Thank you. Thank for, you, thank you for letting me know. No, no problem. I'm working. I'm working with two monitors here. And uh, somehow or another, the two monitors are not cooperating with each other. So I'll back up just a bit to say what we're doing here is romancing the client. We're giving them an opportunity. And ha did, were you able to see any of this? Okay, I will, um, I'll, I'm going to trust that you're able to see what we're looking at right now. Um, we can see it right now. I'm going to go ahead and confirm. Okay, great. So th this is the type of content that we provide to uh, our agents. And you should develop the same kind of content for your website. Content that explains not just what you do, but how the client benefits from it. And how, how, how exciting travel is. The emotion of travel inspiring travel and this is where i was saying right here i mean you look at a picture like that and who doesn't want to see that who doesn't want to experience this kind of travel the romance of travel up close so there's the type of opportunity that we have in order to bring that client into engagement with us, to bring that client closer to us down the funnel so that now they've developed a real interest in what we're doing. And they're beginning to trust us because we're talking now about benefits. We're talking about the way they benefit from working with us. And so when you look at your website, it shouldn't be all about suppliers. It should be all about you. It should give them chances to engage with you. It should give them chances to find you easily. It should put you at the center of the website. Not suppliers. It should put you as a travel professional at the center. Your website ought to look new, it ought to look dynamic, it ought to look modern. It ought to be something that engages the client in the romance of travel. And you drive clients to your website through all the marketing efforts that we discussed earlier. You drive those clients to your website and once they arrive there, whether they're coming from ads that you're taking out on Facebook, or they're coming from travel sense when they get to your site they begin to engage in something wonderful not a search engine and not supplier logos but all about you talking about who you are as an individual why you're in the travel agency uh, world what what why you're there and what you do and and how they benefit from it because that's what they really care about. How do they benefit from their involvement with you? And to the extent that you can, can talk about that, and to the extent that you can engage them 
and convince them that by working with you, they benefit, they're coming right down to the bottom of that funnel. They're coming right down to that point of saying, wow, could we get together and talk about, we're talking about a trip next year. And that's the point at which you're beginning to form real relationships with people. So before we take any questions, I'll just show you one coming soon attraction. This is a new program that we're launching very soon. It's called Travel uh, Trav Market. And the uh, entire point of Trav Market is to drive traffic to websites. And it doesn't matter who you get your website from. It can be from anyone in the industry. It could be your own WordPress site. But we're going to assist agents in driving traffic. And so if you'll watch for Trav Market, um, I think you'll be really excited by the things that we're doing there. So, Kara, if, if there's some questions out there, I'd be glad to field them. Thank you so much, Richard. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start off by saying that this webinar was recorded, everyone, and it will be available for all of our ASCA members to view um, probably by the end of tomorrow, um, if not, but certainly by the end of the week. Um, so it looks like our first question is going to be the $20 spend. Is that Facebook or Instagram? Uh, that's both, actually. We typically do a, a mixed delivery between both Facebook and Instagram. Um, I have found Facebook, honestly, to be more effective um, and less work than Instagram. But both, both have their place, and some people are more comfortable with one than the other. Uh, the, the people I know who are good at Instagram love it and um and stick with it uh i tend to gravitate more to facebook but you have to remember that we are more b2b and travel professionals are more b2c and uh instagram is is a wonderful platform for b2c all right what are the prices on your sites and on what platform are they built on our sites are um for the rest of the world, they're $40 um, for a month uh, for just the website and the hosting and all that good stuff, all the content. The um, If you mix our social media manager with it, it's $60. But Asta uh, has a program that, um, that provides a discount if you're using the Asta promotional code, um, which is capital letters, Asta18. Uh, then it's $35 and $45. So it's a big discount for ASTA members. Um, the, uh, we really haven't come up with a, with a price point for the Trav Market program yet. Thank you. And it looks like our last question that's for the good of the group is, um, where do we discover how to use Facebook so that we aren't using our personal page? Yeah, I mean, it, you really should not use your personal page. Uh, your personal, for, for many reasons, but you know, not the least of which is that um, if Facebook determines that you're using a personal page for business purposes, they will literally bump you off. Uh, so you, you don't want that to happen to yourself. So you definitely need your own, your own page. Um, and we are developing right now a marketing course, uh, on digital marketing. Uh, in fact, if you'll, if you'll write me at richard.earls at travelresearchonline.com, I'll be happy to send you information on, on that marketing course and, and a good bit of it's perfectly free. So it'll, it'll teach you a bit about marketing on Facebook, marketing on some of the other platforms, and just di digital marketing in general. All right. Thank you. And our last question is, uh, is Trav Market a site that will review my website and, and offer suggestions for improvement? Uh, no. No, Trav Market's purpose is to set up uh, marketing automation for uh, for 
people who have websites. So essentially, we're providing a, an email marketing system, lead magnets, uh, the ability to do webinars, landing pages, and we are helping people build marketing funnels. So we will be building marketing funnels and providing them to travel professionals. Again, with any website you've got there, uh, we'll help you design marketing funnels, we'll have pre-designed marketing funnels, and we'll teach you how to use those and how to generate leads for yourself. All right, thank you. And it looks like we have quite a few people that missed your email. If you wanna go ahead and give that out one more time, and then I will announce our winner. Okay, it is richard.earls, E-A-R-L-S, at Travel Research online.com now just to really draw the anticipation out here one more question Trav um, market is $45 can they use it and they can use this on their website correct okay let's let's back up a little bit Trav market has not been released yet and okay. we don't have a price point on Trav market okay. the website the Voyager websites are $40 uh, just for the, for the website program. If you want to add the social media to that, it's $60. And with the asset discount, that becomes $35 and $45. So that's, uh, and the ASTA code is ASTA18. Uh, if you want to go to the Voyager website and explore that, that is a Voyager Perfect. We'll web it up for com. And All then right. uh, Trav Market will be released uh, sometime in the middle of August. Perfect. And uh, with all the questions coming in about Trav Market, I can tell that they are very eager for its release. So I'm looking <laughs> forward to that. Too. Well, I tell you, we're, we are excited for it, too. We've already got people lining up. We have a, a work group. Uh, for um, the Voyager users, and we've got people lining up for it already. It, um, you know, th there's some great tools out there in the industry. You know, whether you're talking about Mailchimp or GetResponse or, you know, any number of great tools out there, but they're time consumptive. And so what we've done is we've we've partnered with one of the major providers of this type type of technology, and we are wrapping our training and our support and our content around it. And we're gearing it all to the travel industry because mostly uh, the industries that utilize that kind of technology are not travel related. And so we're wrapping all of that around these technologies and we'll be training travel agents in how to use it and creating the content for them to use it effectively. All right, thank you so much, Richard. Um, everyone, I did just do a send all that included Richard's contact information just to make it a little bit easier for you. And drum roll, please. But Marilyn Scott, you are our lucky webinar gift card winner for today. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us. Um, thank you so much for everyone for being so engaged. We got so many amazing questions. Richard, there are a few that more for the good of the group that I will go ahead and follow up with you later on. Um, Marilyn, I will also be connecting with you um, by the end of the day as well. But thank you so much, Richard, for such an informative presentation. We all greatly appreciate it, and I hope that everyone has a wonderful remainder of their afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thanks so much.